When it comes to opening day attractions at Epcot Center, most of them were a little unusual, and not necessarily something you'd expect Disney to make. But even for Epcot, nothing was quite as strange as a show about singing food. And yes, they actually did that. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Keep Epcot Weird, a video series focusing on the stranger and more obscure aspects of Epcot. And this video is all about the Kitchen Cabaret, later known as Food Rocks. Now, if you've never had the pleasure of hearing about this fever dream of an attraction yourself, Kitchen Cabaret was a musical review type show starring animatronic foods with the goal of educating guests about eating healthy and the different food groups. If you couldn't tell, this show was one of the reasons why early Epcot was often made fun of for its attempts at educational entertainment, which more often than not just resulted in bizarre attractions that were far too weird to actually be informational. But we are not going to make any judgments. I'm here, I want to learn about food, and enjoy a good show in the process, so let's check it out. Now, in terms of an attraction's backstory, it's almost impossible to get a cohesive storyline together, aside from who built or designed what. So, good thing this isn't a History Up video. Otherwise, I would probably just be limited to saying, yeah, someone came up with the idea and then they made it. Alright, bye! From the very little knowledge available about the show, it's most likely that the Land Pavilion's original sponsor, Kraft Foods, wanted an attraction that represented their brand, more so than the Pavilion's other attractions like Living with the Land and Symbiosis, which were both more so about the environment. Why they would want a jar of mayonnaise playing the drums associated with their brand, well, I'm not in marketing so I wouldn't know. Anyhow, despite the fact that development on the show supposedly began as late as 1979, the attraction was still ready for the park's opening day in October of 1982. Now, since the only way to cover an obscure show like this is to go over the whole thing scene by scene, that's what we'll be doing. Granted, it'll only be the abridged version, but you'll still get the idea. Additionally, we'll also be doing the same thing with Kitchen Cabaret's predecessor and replacement show Food Rocks later in the video. So get comfortable, folks. You're in for a double feature. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started. And now, the show that has the whole town cooking. The Kitchen Cabaret. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's going to be a lot of puns and wordplay going on in this video. Even more so than usual, so just be ready for that. Speaking of which, let's meet our host, Bonnie Appetit. Oh, Oh, I get it. Bonnie Appetit, yeah. Yeah, I get it. Bonnie then sets up the show by singing about meal prep and the importance of a balanced diet. To work magic in our kitchen mm, yeah. And chase away the mealtime blues In addition to singing in the intro and having some dead, lifeless eyes, Bonnie also does vocals for the first act that being the kitchen crackpots, who are comprised of various condiments like mustard, mayonnaise, and barbecue sauce. Thank you folks for coming to my kitchen As I sing the praise of good nutrition Eating balanced meals can keep you fit Feeling grand or variety at your three meals can only improve the way you feel Alright, this is already getting a bit off the rails. I don't... I don't really know what's going on. Uh, maybe the next act will make more sense. It's time to meet some beauties at this our rendezvous. Nope. Nope. That is that is not better. That's actually worse. Um, why is the milk singing? Does anybody know? Anybody? Here is Miss Cheese, a delightful array of curves. This act is called the Stars of the Milky Way, where Mr. Crooning Milk over there is accompanied by other dairy products like cheese and yogurt. And you know, I get it, they've each got their own styles of old school cabaret singing, that's all fine. But it just kind of seems a little bit out there, especially given the fact that Wikipedia refers to Miss Yogurt's demeanor as that of a European sex kitten. Yeah, you know, I, I don't need to be attracted to yogurt. I'm perfectly fine just treating that like a food. Oh, but of course, often I dream of Miss Ice Cream, a beauty who's charming and sweet. Mm, I'm cool through and through, and I've got a double scoop for you. Alright, alright, I get it. No more ice cream. I 
feel violated. Yeah, yeah, go back into the fridge. You guys are already spoiled. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I, I can't help it. Now this next act is really great. I'm a big fan. It's the Serial Sisters with the Boogie Woogie Bakery Boy. In time he found the shelf, seen was good and humdrum. Sitting going nowhere made him feel like a crumb. One day he left the cupboard, it had caused him strife. He up his act for a new slice of life. Oh my god, he's got a little trumpet! I love it, I love it, it's the best. And despite this being the only parody song in the whole show, I'm still willing to give it a pass, solely for how cool that toast is. Next up is Ham and Eggs, a comedy duo with some jokes and a few little ditties to sing. As members of the meat group, we would like to sing this song. And cook you up some ditties as we're singing right along. At meals, our act is very keen. We're chocolate of protein. The, the meat group can help you keep strong. Also, every time the egg told one of his bad jokes, his bow tie would shake, which is a nice little detail I do appreciate. This next act is definitely the best and catchiest of all, with Veggie Veggie Fruit Fruit by the Colander Combo and Fiesta Fruit. So if you don't want to be singing this one all day, you better get those earplugs ready. I simply have to tell you that my friends who are singing are delectable. <laughs> Meals are defined as long as you can dine with fruit and vegetables. As you can tell, Bonnie also sang in this song as well, which is fine, but I have a feeling that she might be overhyping just how great fruits and vegetables are. My friends are exciting just like fireworks igniting there. Incredible! Sparks always fly each and every time you try fruit and vegetables! I've eaten plenty of fruits and veggies in my life, and not once have they caused fireworks to go off, so I don't know. Kinda seems like false advertising. And finally, our big closer brings back all the previous acts, and together they sing a medley of their songs. Really driving home the point that in order to have a fully balanced diet, you need to eat from all of the different food groups. And that's a pretty neat way of showing that. Wow, what a show. Did you guys like it? Because I loved it. And if you didn't like it and thought it was terrible, oh don't worry, it's gonna get a lot worse very soon. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So yes, the Kitchen Cap Ray was very strange and not exactly educational. I mean, I kind of learned about food, but not anything I didn't already know. Yeah, be sure to eat from all the different food groups. Okay, I'll do that. I didn't need to be harassed by dairy products to get the message. I think that was actually the most important takeaway, just to stay away from the fridge late at night or some questionable characters hanging around there. In all seriousness, as far as the stage show about singing food with a healthy eating message tacked onto it goes, Kitchen Cabaret did a pretty good job. Considering what the attraction could have very easily been, it's nice that Disney really gave it their all to try and make it entertaining. Plus there was some nice original music done by good performers and a whole bunch of fun and unique animatronic characters. For the first 10 years after the park's opening, Kitchen Cabaret had little to no changes whatsoever and saw dozens of daily performances at the Land Pavilion. However, when Kraft's sponsorship ran out on the pavilion in 1992 and they decided not to re-up, the Land was left without any financial backing. Luckily for Disney, they were able to quickly get another food company, Nestle, to sign on in 1993. Given the fact that they were now paying for upkeep on the pavilion and its attractions, Nestle was interested in updating the now decade-old building, prompting them to change everything from the interior design to a few scenes in the Living with the Land boat ride. However, Kitchen Cabaret, likely the most dated attraction there, remained untouched. That was until about a year later, when the show was closed in January of 1994 and work began on a new show that Nestle was paying for. 
Typically, when it comes to turnaround times on opening new attractions, or at the very least new versions of older attractions, you're usually looking at about a year or two at least. For example, the recent conversion of Maelstrom into Frozen Ever After back in 2014 took roughly two years to complete, a relatively short time considering what all was changed. So you can see why it might seem a little weird that the replacement show Food Rocks was open just three months after the closure of Kitchen Cabaret. Not necessarily the best sign for those expecting things like, uh, I don't know, a decent attraction. But you know what, I'm sure we're just being a little too harsh. Let's check out the new show, maybe it's not that bad. Hello Epcot Center, and welcome to the all-star benefit for good nutrition. Now put your hands together for the utensils. When you cook it with us, there's so much you can do. You can bake, you can fry, you can roast, you can stew. <laughs> oh my god, what is this? What did they do? This, this can't be real. This is not happening. As you guys can probably tell, Food Rocks was one of the many victims of what I like to call Eisner-era Imagineering where if you can make a new attraction, you better do it as cheaply as possible. Which in this case meant far less detail than more two-dimensional figures, along with no original music, opting instead to go for parody songs since those were cheaper to make. In a sense, Food Rocks was also a parody of Kitchen Cabaret itself. While reusing some of the old sets and figures, the show really just took the idea of singing food to the umpteenth and most ridiculous level. Where the original show was mostly reserved and managed to take itself seriously, Food Rocks just went all out with the different acts and almost acknowledged how weird it was. But before we get to those acts, let's meet our new host. Replacing Bonnie Appetit is Food Rapper, portrayed by actual rapper Tone Loke. And I would not be surprised if the only reason they got him was so they could do the Food Rapper joke. Yeah, the rest of the show is going to be chock full of gems just like that, so I hope you're ready. Now here's your host, Food Rapper! Hey, thanks everybody. You know, your food knows a thing or two about eating, right? Take it from the pick of the crop. Ladies and gentlemen, the Peach Boys. Food, you'll be happy with the food you eat. Mixing different kinds, each meal can be a treat. While I can't speak to the relevancy of parodying the Beach Boys in this show, these guys are definitely taking the lead for most adorable performance. They are just so cute, I want to eat them! We're talking of good nutrition, it's not just a superstition. Our next act is the Refrigerator Police, singing Every Bite You Take. Every single dish, and every bread and Like the secret wish is a part of you. Well, I for one am glad to see that our old friend Mr. Dairy Goods is still being a weirdo. At least now he's got a jean jacket and some shades, because you can never be too cool when you're stalking people. And while we're still killing it with all the puns, let's throw it over to Peter Gabriel with high fiber. I wanna be After that, we've got our host, Food Rapper, with his own song about reading labels. Searching for some lunch on a kitchen expedition. What you graves in the microwave, but how about nutrition? A box of can of bag, a package on a table. Before you rip, have a bag or sip, check the contents on the label. <laughs> what is this? What is going on? Shout out to anyone who remembers what this is a parody of. I really don't think Funky Cold Medina has the cultural longevity that some of these other songs do. Smart, you gotta read the rapper. Always read the rapper. Now here's the soul of rock and roll with a lean message for everybody. I'm for dinner, I am protein. Alright, that's, that's enough of that. That's actually way more than enough of that, to be honest with you. Is that a fish? 
Why is it wearing a wig? I, I, I don't even know anymore. If you couldn't tell, whatever that thing is up there is actually voiced by Cher. Oh, Cher, what are you doing? It wasn't bad enough that you were in Superstar Limo, you had to be in this too? Do you not like having a career, or what's going on? Also, this marks the halfway point in the show, and right now you might be asking why this show is so much longer than Kitchen Cabaret. And the main reason is that by the time Food Rocks began its development in the 90s, the old model of four basic food groups was replaced by the Food Pyramid, so obviously to keep the new show educational, it reflected those changes by having more acts. Coincidentally, on top of being the halfway point, this is also apparently where everyone involved in the show just decided to give up, because production gets progressively lazier as the show goes on. For example, the next performance, Tutti Frutti, has pretty minimal movement in the animatronic, and the same can be said for the act after that, which tries to hide the mostly static figure by putting it behind a piano. Unfortunately, the next one isn't too much better either, considering it's only a projection, but at least it's a little more entertaining. Come on, baby. After that, we get the only original song in the show, performed by the junk food band Excess, who have been continually interrupting it up until this point. We're tired of this nutrition stuff. We're tired of hearing bunk. We're tired of hearing about exercise. Cause you know there's nothing like staying at home. Yeah, staying at home. There's nothing like it. It's just so awesome. These guys play until Food Rapper unplugs them, and they can't perform anymore because, you know, you get it, they don't have energy because they're unhealthy, it's just so clever. The last real act is the Get to the Point Sisters, with a song about moderation. And finally, much like Kitchen Cabaret, this show also brings back all the previous acts for a big finale and reprise of the opening number. Eating right is easy. Choose before you chew. We're waiting in the kitchen. Waiting in the kitchen for you. Well, that was definitely something. I don't exactly know what, but it was something. Believe it or not, Food Rocks was actually somewhat successful when it first opened. The show's use of popular music and general fun vibe really helped liven up the pavilion, at a time when it was considered one of the more boring Future World attractions. However, the novelty wore off pretty quickly, as the whole thing began to feel more and more dated with each passing year. By the time Nestle's sponsorship was about to expire on the pavilion in 2003, the company would only resign if they could again renovate the pavilion and also give it a new attraction. So Disney proposed bringing over the only successful attraction from their California Adventure Park, that being Soarin' Over California, a flight simulator that opened there two years prior, in 2001. And with that, Nestle agreed and continued to sponsor the pavilion. Shortly after that, Food Rocks was officially closed on January 3rd of 2004. Now, since the show building for Soren is obviously much larger than the theater used for Food Rocks, the actual ride portion of the attraction takes place outside the pavilion, in a separate building made specifically for it. But what's interesting about that is the entrance for both attractions are in the same place, meaning that the old waiting area for Food Rocks is now where guests first enter into the queue for Soren. Even more interesting is that, while the waiting area was demolished in 2004, the actual stage apparently wasn't. Since the theater was off to the side of the pavilion, and not directly in the way of the new queue, it was just walled off and not actually removed, likely to save on construction costs. I'm about to break this whole thing down for you guys, so I hope you're ready. We, we got a diagram and everything. So this right here in the middle is the Food Rocks Theater. Up here is the stage, and over here are the seats. Now when Soren's queue was being constructed, they removed the seats and also went through the original waiting area, leaving it looking something like this. However, the stage itself was left standing, just now hidden behind a newly built wall. 
For a while, that was purely speculation, until a few photos emerged in the latter half of the 2000s, confirming that parts of the stage were indeed still around. As to whether or not that's still the case today, it's hard to say, considering the Land Pavilion isn't really a hot spot for urban exploration. As for the actual animatronics, they were most likely sold off to various collectors after their removal, and never properly archived by Disney. Since then, some of the Food Rocks figures have popped up in places like the Mouse Surplus Warehouse back in 2006, and some of their clothes were sold off on eBay in 2012. But that really only goes for the figures from that show. As far as I know, all the Kitchen Cabaret animatronics were scrapped in 1994, with the exception of Mr. Dairy Goods, who obviously made his way into the new show. Either way, the legacy of both Kitchen Cabaret and Food Rocks have undoubtedly left their mark on both Epcot and in the minds of audience members around the world. I'm usually reluctant to use words like scarring, but in this case it seems pretty accurate. Well folks, we did it. Another weird attraction in the bag. I look forward to never having to see or hear about it again. Although I do believe Veggie Veggie Fruit Fruit has been uh, carved into my soul. Not too sure if that's going to come out, but that's fine. A small price to pay for the Keep Epcot Weird cause. I'm not sure if any of the future videos in this series are going to be focused on a single attraction, like this one kinda was, but when you're talking about weird stuff at Epcot, you can't not bring up these shows. It's just an obligation. Also, I am 100% sure this video won't be eligible for monetization because of all the parody songs. Thanks, Food Rocks. You are definitely not worth it. So as always, if you like the video or want to support the channel, t-shirts, Patreon, whichever you prefer, links to all that can be found in the description. And with that, I am off for now, but eh, you know what the heck, I'm in a good mood. Why don't we bring Mr. Dairy Goods back out for a final number? It's all yours, buddy. Go ahead, take it away. We must You call that a clean plate? Well, sort of, except for the vegetables, because I, I just learned that they grow these things in the ground.